Jesus. 
Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you are our living hope. And what that means for us, that, that you're our, our foundation, that you're our hope in any time, any trial of life. God, that you're faithful and you're secure. God, as we remember in the scriptures, uh, every good and perfect gift comes from you, comes from the Father above, who does not change like shifting shadows. God, so many things in our world you can't depend on. But with you, we can. And so I thank you for that and pray that you would continue to, to show us how to, to understand the truth of that. Not just to hear it and to acknowledge the words, but, but really take it to heart and to live by it. And so, Father, as we continue in that, I pray that even tonight you would give us a clearer sense of who you are, how dependable you are, and how we can base every part of our lives on you. Father, we love you. We thank you for this. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good evening, and thank you for joining us for this midweek moment. Uh, a few things that I want to let you know about as we are in our summertime. There's uh, still some great things coming up this week. Our students right now uh, have been enjoying our uh, students' uh, summer bash, and it's been going really well. Let me encourage you to keep praying for them as they uh, spend their day during the day here, uh, praying, having a lot of fun, but doing a lot of Bible study and encouraging one another and calling out the best in one another as they seek to follow Christ together. Um, but lots of good stuff there. Uh, then later this summer, uh, in August, we're doing something we've never done before. We're doing our Vacation Bible Sundays. Um, what we're doing, we're taking our Vacation Bible School curriculum and we're putting it in Sunday morning format um, so that our kids can experience that each Sunday of the month of August. And then we're gearing all of our services and everything on Sunday mornings to coincide with that. And so the theme this year is Destination Dig, uh, Seeking Truth and Finding Jesus. And it's all about digging into God's Word, digging into the truth, and understanding the reliability of God's Word and how it all points back to Jesus. And so it's going to be a great time for our kids. Uh, they're going to get to go deeper with their Sunday school teachers um, and then... For our older ones that are here in the worship service, our services are going to be geared uh, to Vacation Bible School as well. So uh, it's going to be a fun time for all of us as a church family to kind of walk through that month together. Then at the end of the month, on August the 28th, uh, that's a Saturday, we're going to have our mini music day camp. That's for boys and girls, uh, grade 1 through 6, to come up here for the afternoon. They'll learn the, the Vacation Bible School music. And then we'll share that with us in the worship service the following day. So two different things there. There's the Vacation Bible Sundays that we all get to participate in. Then the mini music day camp that's entirely free, but your kids do need to register for that. So we have uh, adequate supplies for them. Um, if you could follow the, the link that's in the, in the comment section, that'll help us out there. All right, lots of good stuff coming up. Hope that you will take advantage of it. Well, we just sang the song there, Living Hope, and that's one that we sing here from time to time. Uh, it's one of, one of the songs that I love, but I don't know if you've thought about what it means for Jesus to be our living hope. Uh, that's not just a phrase that some songwriter came up with that actually goes back to Scripture. And so if you have your Bibles close by, let me ask you to go ahead and turn to, to 1 Peter chapter 1. Uh, this is where we find this verse, and uh, it's part of the beginning of Paul's letter, or excuse me, Peter's letter to, uh, to Christians uh, in the area of what's now modern day Turkey, and he's writing to them when they're in a time of, of just being kind of pushed aside on all sides. They're, they're struggling, they're kind of, they're minorities in the culture, they're being pushed aside by all these different forces, the governors and leaders and people that just don't get why they would follow Jesus and not get on board with the rest of what culture's doing and, you know, worshiping the emperor and, you know, being a part of just all the, the normal stuff. So they're, you know, they're kind of harassed and pushed on all different sides, these Christians are, and Peter's writing to them to encourage them. 
And uh, this is what he writes. If we go down to 1 Peter 1, starting in verse 3, he says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Now, when he's talking about living hope, he's kind of highlighting how what we've been born into, what, what we've become a part of through faith in Jesus, it's different than any other kind of hope. Now, if you think about hope, hope is something that, that people long for, people chase after, people have to live with hope. That's something we pretty much all recognize, no matter what uh, faith background or what, uh, just kind of how you live, how you view the world, people recognize if there's one thing we all need, we need hope. And so folks from non-religious backgrounds have often run after, tried to identify a way of, or a means of finding hope. Uh, some people from different faith communities have different ways of kind of articulating hope. Um, there's been a lot of ideas about how do we find hope that will last and hold secure. You know, there was a movement, a philosophical movement from about the 17th century onward for a couple hundred years or so called the philosophy of modernism. And uh, without getting too nerdy in the school kind of mode, the idea behind it, among lots of others, part of the idea was this idea that humanity is continuing to, to get better and better. We're, we're learning more and more ideas. We're learning how to apply technology and create new and better tools. And if we keep creating new and better tools, then life is going to get better and better, and we're going to basically, you know, eliminate problems. In fact, there's a, a really interesting thing. Back when uh, there was the World's Fair in New York City in 1964, Walt Disney was asked to put together an exhibit, and he put together an, exhi an exhibit called the Carousel of Progress. And if you've been to Disney World in Florida, that exhibit is now at Disney World. It's a ride there that's been running forever. But it's, it's a, uh, like a ride that takes you from following the technology of kind of normal American life from, say, the late, mid to late 1800s all the way forward to the 1960s or so. And the idea was to highlight how people are getting better and better because we're, we're learning to utilize technology more and more, and so our life is getting better and better. And there really was this idea that, you know, there's a better day coming tomorrow. Now, there's a song that goes there while you ride the carousel of progress that says there's a bright, big, beautiful tomorrow just around the bend. And uh, that was very much an idea that a lot of people held to. But around the 1960s, 70s, and so, there was a movement in, you know, kind of in the world of philosophy to recognize that's not really always true. I mean, technology can help solve a lot of problems, but there's still some stuff that with all the technology in the world, we just can't seem to address. You know, we, we have more technological tools and gadgets now than we've ever known in our lifetime, and yet stuff like loneliness and anxiety and depression, those seem to be more and more rampant. You know, for all the different tools and all the different technology pieces, we don't seem to be happier. We don't seem to be better connected. There's a lot of things where technology can help, but there's a lot of stuff that it doesn't. And so some people kind of in the world of philosophy have started to talk about the myth of progress. That that modernist idea that things are going to keep getting better and better, that's actually a myth that's not true. Now, here's, here's what we want to think about. For people that looked at hope in modernism, hope that things were going to get better, what happens when that goes away? What happens when that idea is kind of exposed as not true? Their, their hope dies, right? If that's what your hope is in, that things are going to keep getting better and better until all problems are eliminated, when that's proven not really to hold up, then that hope is dead. 
It, do, it has nothing else to offer. There are other, other places that people have put their hope down through the ages that maybe hold up for a while, but then something changes. Something you know, unexpected happens. And then that foundation of hope, it's no longer relevant. It's obsolete. It is dead. It's no longer a valid source of hope. Here's what's different about Jesus. No matter how our world changes, no matter what philosophical movements come and go, no matter what technological developments arise, no matter what changes come in our world, no matter how the different things around us ebb and flow, Jesus always is a sure foundation for hope. You know, there's lots of things that people can look back on and say, I'm basing all of my hope on this set of teachings by this guru. But what happens when the world around us changes and it's different than what that guru ever saw? For, though, that, for them, that's a, a dead hope. It doesn't adapt. For followers of Jesus, our Lord is resurrected and living. We know that he's living now on the throne. And that means that because he's living and he's sent his spirit to guide us, whatever unfolds in front of us, whatever things come our way, whatever new kind of rules that the world runs by, our Lord is still living. He's still relevant. He still has an answer. He still is able to guide us to know how to follow him faithfully in the midst of the changing, chaotic, tumultuous climate in our world. No matter what comes and goes, Jesus is still alive. He's still on the throne. He's still able to guide his people into how we're to live and how we're to have hope in the midst of whatever comes. And so for followers of Jesus, what that really does, it gives us hope, but it gives us an assurance, a peaceful assurance, where we don't have to fear what comes about. There's an old hymn many of you probably know, Because He Lives. It says, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. That's what it means when we say Jesus is our living hope. Because Jesus has been raised from the dead that we know we have hope beyond what we can see here. And because he's still living and he's still on his throne, whatever challenges or hardship or resistance or difficulty we face, we may not have been through it before. We may face new challenges, but we have our Lord who's on the throne guiding us, assuring us that he will be with us every step of the way, that he will guide us and empower us as we follow him through these new challenges. And ultimately, he's going to see that his work is done, that all of creation is renewed and restored to his perfect order, and we are with him forever. That's the living hope that Jesus offers. And so as we go back and we read through a few more of the verses, I want us to get a picture of that living hope that Jesus offers and how it's a part of what God has done for us. Peter says again, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. But not just that. He's also given us into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed at the last time. He's saying, look, you have hope that can last, that's living, that endures. And as a part of that, there's an inheritance that God has for you. There's a whole new heavens and new earth and a place in it that God has prepared for his people that we can all look forward to. 
And one day, there's a salvation that will be revealed. God's rescue that we believe in. We've seen Jesus provide for our salvation. But one, one day we'll see where he brings it about, where we're brought into presence with him. Peter's saying, this is the hope that you can hold to, that gives you something to hold on to now, that gives you something to look forward to in the future, and that one day you will see fully. That's what we sing about. That's what we mean when we're singing about living hope. And that's something that we can live with now while we look forward. And so, church family, as we uh, continue to, to go on, you know, there's one thing that is true. It's that there will continue to be new challenges that we face each day, new, new ideas that maybe are challenging to us, new ideas even that are frightening, you know, new developments around us that are you know, different. There's going to be new things arise that sometimes we scratch our heads and try to figure out how do we make sense of all this new around us. We can be assured whatever, whatever challenges or hardships or whatever just new ways of, of living, whatever new things come up in our world, we can be assured as followers of Jesus, we have hope that will not be shaken that will not be undercut, that will not be ruled obsolete. Our faith, our hope in Jesus allows us to face whatever tomorrow holds, with, not with fear, but with faith, with confidence, and with assurance that God will lead us forward. And so let's continue to not just talk about the hope, but actually ask God to show us how to live in light of the hope that he offers us. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you so much for how you spell this out here and how through Christ we do have assurance. We have a hope that a hope that lasts through all the different ebbs and flows throughout our world. God, as, as, as our world has adapted and changed and we've gone from, from paper and pen to typewriter to computers in our pockets, none of that's a threat to you. You are always faithful. Because you're always on the throne. God, we don't have to look forward in fear. We don't have to look around us at, at our world in fear. But rather, we get the assurance of knowing that you are still on your throne. That you do have a good future provided for us. And we get to live in that confidence. And so, Father, help us to live in that way. God, when we see things that are, that are broken and that are not helpful around us, God, keep us from reacting in fear or, or even anger, but rather show us how to walk with confident hope. Confident not in our ability, but in yours. God, shape us to be that kind of people, hopeful, because of what you offer us. We thank you. We love you. We pray these things in Jesus' name.